Trinity Church, it is so good to see you here online. I'm glad that you're taking this opportunity to connect with me. My name is Josh, if we haven't met before, and I am one of the pastors here on staff. We're looking forward to a great time of celebration today. This is not our kickoff Sunday. It's kind of the cherry on the top of our worship and sing songs of praise to one another as we put the cherry on the top of our One Another series that brought us through the summer. We can't wait to take this time to be able to read scripture together, to pray, to celebrate, to sing, and to hear what it actually means for people in our worship culture to be singing songs to one another and what the power of music does and the power of worship does for each one of us. We can't wait to see what God's going to do in your life. On the other side of this lens, on the other side of this screen, we are so excited to hear what stories God might be stirring up in you. We know that as you connect into this community, there's so many things to keep track of and so many stories to tell, but one of the best ways to do that is to just visit our website, stay in the know, sign up for our newsletter, and check out three things. Trinity family. Happy Sunday. My name is Sarah and I'm here to tell you about three exciting things coming up in our community. Check it out. At number one, if you have big questions about God, life, and faith, then you're in great company. It's normal to have questions about what life is all about. That's why we can't wait to dive into the Alpha course together starting on September 12th. Alpha is a series of sessions exploring life, faith, and meaning. Together, we'll have dinner and listen to a different talk each week that explores a different aspect of the Christian faith, followed by a small group discussion where you can say exactly what's on your mind. It's designed to be a safe space where you can say whatever you're thinking and hear others' points of view from people who may be on the same journey as you. You never know how your perspective could change or deepen when you open yourself up to conversation. So try it out. Head on over to trinitychurchcolona.ca slash courses to sign up for Alpha and to check out some of our other amazing semester course offerings. At number two, some people believe that to be a leader, you have to be a CEO, a manager, or have a high ranking title. But we know that that's not true. See, whether you're called to ministry, a nine to five job, parenting, being a student, or whatever relationships you find yourself investing in, God wants to invite you to embrace being the leader that he's calling you to be. And so this is why we want you to join us at the Global Leadership Summit right here at Trinity on October 19th and 20th. Experience two days of fresh leadership perspective, inspiring stories and rich learning from industry leading faculty in a wide range of fields and backgrounds. Learn about what it means to redefine leadership to be wherever you are. You can register today and learn more about GLS by visiting trinitychurchcolona.ca slash GLS. Get your ticket before the early bird pricing ends on September 27th and get excited about how these leadership tools could spark transformation in your areas of influence. And at number three, every single one of us has been wired for connection. We thrive when we spend time in community, just like Jesus did. Around here, we do that best through community groups. Groups are how we bring the church into our neighborhoods, sharing life, meals, and meaningful conversation around tables in our homes. And it's a proactive approach to life. It's how we celebrate, reflect, grieve, doubt, laugh, cry, wrestle with God, and take the next step. So if you're looking for a way to create deeper community connections, we would love for you to consider how you can join, lead or even start a group. If you have a home where you would love to host or you're gifted and getting a conversation going around the dinner table, or you're excited to dive into more of the teaching topics from our weekends with others, there is a group for you. You can visit trinitychurchcolona.ca slash groups 
to learn more and to sign up for a group today. Well, that's your three things for this week. Be sure to head over to the link in our East Lobby after today's service to talk to one of our awesome team members about any of these three things. You can also find all of these details by visiting the events page on our website or by signing up for our weekly email newsletter. As we gather today, Jesus is inviting each one of us into community, worship, and growth. And we believe that God wants to have a meaningful encounter with you in this next hour. We're so glad that you're here. Oh, good morning, everyone. We recognize it's uh, beginning of September. There's probably about a thousand things that are pulling at our attention and a different, you know, hundreds of things that are launching. And we want to make it as easy as possible for you. And this morning, we believe that every single one of us is here for a reason. And we believe that there is freedom and that there is joy to be discovered and experienced here today. And so we're going to start off by worshiping our God as wholeheartedly as we can. Let's stand on our feet. Let's sing as loud as we can. Come on, here we go. Not sir. 
invite us into a moment of prayer, and I'm going to pray Psalm 66 to start that. Would you join me as we pray? God, we shout to you with joy. All the earth shouts. God, we bring glory to your, to your name. We make your praise glorious. We say how awesome are your deeds, God, because your power is great. We bow down to you, all the earth bows down, declaring, come and see what God has done. God, we come into this space declaring, come and see what the living God has done how you've brought us through this week, how you're bringing us into tomorrow, how you are present with us today. We thank you and praise you for the ways that we can say that this is what living looks like. As we walk in your ways, as we seek your truth, as we declare your promises, God, we praise you. We thank you for what you are doing and what you will do in our lives. Thank you. We say yes to you and declare that we are here and we are ready to meet with you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Why don't you have a seat? It is great to be with you. If we haven't had a chance to meet, uh, my name is Josh, and I'm one of the pastors here, and it's my privilege to serve. Uh, now, if you are just checking out church, uh, you are church shopping right now in the fall because you recently moved in, uh, or uh, you are back after a while, we, yeah, it's church shopping. You guys know you're chuckling in the front row. Uh, you know that sometimes uh, churches pass the plate or they be, do a big offering push. Uh, that's not us, but we do want to just continue to remind you how we work towards generosity. And there are many ways that you can do that. They're going to show up on the screen. There are digital options, but there's also just big steel boxes in the, in the foyer that you can drop something in. If you need an envelope, they're there on the side of the box. But we, you also know that we are just committed to more than financial generosity, but just living generously because we give to the God who first gives us, gives to us, and gives us everything we need. In fact, uh, I checked in with the Shelter Canada team that's getting ready to head uh, out on mission in October, and you might have noticed if you've been around here a few weeks that there was a little house in the, in the east foyer. I definitely noticed it because my seven-year-old son was hanging off the rafters often, uh, but it is no longer there. And you might be wondering why. Well, because they are so close to meeting their goals. We're not selling panels anymore. We are just generously giving to what God is going to do on that trip. Can we celebrate that? And as a body of people gathered, uh, we have used a giving liturgy, a giving work of the people in the past. And I want to turn our eyes to the screen behind me, and we're going to say it together. Because sometimes it's about Shelter Canada, and sometimes it's about the programming that we get to launch into this week. And sometimes it's just about what God is going to do in our midst, and we hold it open-handedly. But together with one voice... With emphasis, I would love for you to say this with me. We bring nothing into this world and take nothing out of it. We who call Jesus Lord devote ourselves to resisting greed, which consumes our hearts and leads to destructive patterns. We are determined to practice generosity by fixing our hope on God and not the uncertainty of wealth. We desire to be rich in good deeds, to share joyfully without counting the cost. We open our eyes to see the needs of others and to invest in what is eternal. Amen. May generosity rise up in us this week. Uh, I had a chance uh, to sit with leaders yesterday that were moving towards serving our community. And so uh, there are lots of opportunities to, to serve. We sat with community group leaders and Alpha Table hosts and Trinity women leaders yesterday who are 
taking their steps to serve. And if you are just joining us, one of the best ways to get connected here is to serve, whether it's on the welcome team, tech team, arts team, so many teams. Trinity Kids would love your help as well as we think about what it will look like uh, to make more room to be able to to move to a second service later, later this year. We look forward to that, but it requires us giving of our time and coming ready to serve. So if you're looking for those opportunities, you can actually visit our website, trinitychurchcolona.ca slash volunteer, or better yet, go talk to someone at the link or talk to one of our ministry leads that you might find along the way. They'd be wearing a name tag or, or visit with one of the team members and say, hey, how can I get connected? I feel like this could be an area that I would like to serve. We would love for you to, to do that. Uh, as we think about Trinity Kids, I want to just point out that there is a Roll Up, Level Up Sunday happening right now, where there are a ton of kids that are, are moving on up. Our preschoolers are moving up to, to kindergarten, our kindergartners are moving up to grade one, all of, all of, taking all of those steps, and our grade fives are moving up into grade six, meaning that there is going to be an influx of grade sixes here next week. Right now, they get to play around with, with Pastor JM, and they're having lots of fun as they finish their final Sunday in, in Trinity Kids and they get ready to be middle schoolers. But just a heads up, find a kid and celebrate with them today. Find an opportunity to meet them in the courtyard, to, to come around a family and say, we're celebrating with you what God is going to do in the life of your kid this year. Make sure you take that opportunity and practically make sure that you stay in the know. Uh, as, we're, as myself uh, and my wife, we're launching a kid from grade five into grade six. I had to like reselect a new, uh, new tab on our email list. We were just in the Trinity Kids uh, area and we were getting all the email updates and I had to check the dreaded box that said parent of a middle schooler. That's fun, did that last night because I wanted to actually see what it, what, what it meant. Uh, so we're, we're very, very thankful, very excited. So celebrate with family, stay in the know, sign up for those new newsletters. Uh, to, to keep us on task today, we are diving into a Mission Vision Values conversation today at four o'clock over in the hub. If you haven't been a part of these, one of these yet, we would love your voice there as we seek what it looks like for God's kingdom to come into this local church and what God is uniquely going to do in and through us. Uh, so there is a mission, vision, values gathering happening in the hub at 4 p.m., followed by supper. So you can come and participate, and then your supper plans are also taken care of. Uh, and very lastly, uh, next week is our kickoff Sunday where there is going to be an amazing opportunity to celebrate, to worship, to pray, to learn together, to celebrate baptisms, and have free pancakes. So, is it free? I don't even, I just said it. Oh no. <laughs> Anyways, there, is there will be enough pancakes for everyone in attendance, so make sure that you come and plan to stick around. I don't know, maybe I'm paying for them now, <laughs> who knows? Uh, but we would love for you to join us for our kickoff Sunday uh, and stick around for, for uh, lunch to follow. Invite friends, invite neighbors, invite coworkers for this opportunity to just see what God is going to do in our midst. Well, I've talked enough, so I'm going to hand it off to Dave, who did some talking with people ahead of our worship night on Wednesday night as we explored uh, people's thoughts on worship. So turn your eyes to the screen and check it out. Hey, I'm Dave, and we're here to ask some questions about worship culture. Uh, what is your favorite worship song of all time? Favorite worship song of all time? Wow, there's so many to choose from. I like uh, some of the latest stuff, Dry Bones Rattle. Oh, Waymaker. Trust in God. Oh, Praises by Elevation Worship. Good call. Lord, I need you. Good one. Um, probably Firm Foundation. Oh my goodness, I was just listening to some gospel music here and the last one before I left was How Great Thou Art. What's your favorite song? Ready, set, move. Ready, set, move, classic. Uh, what worship song reminds you of your childhood? Oh, I think Cornerstone. Cornerstone. What comes to mind is Jesus Loves Me. Jesus Loves Me. Uh, maybe Zacchaeus was a wee little man. A wee little man was he? Oh, I Will Follow by Chris Tomlin. 
What's your favorite camp song? Funky Chicken. Okay, give me a little Funky Chicken. I have to give you a Funky Chicken? What's that you said? One Way Jesus is my favorite, like, fun worship song. One that I could live for. We had, we had one out east called Bill Grogan's Goat, and it was one of those ones where, you know, the animal doesn't make it at the end. Finish the lyric to this song. Uh, Refiner's fire, my heart's one desire is to be... On fire for you. No, but that's beautiful. With my sire? No, try again. I don't, I don't know, man. Is to be... Yours? Like you. On fire for you. Like you? One desire is to be... Holy set apart for you, Lord. This guy's not messing around. Then sings my soul, my savior God to thee, how... Great thou art. Way to go, she's schooled. Oh, great my soul. So close. Uh. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to... Worship you. So close, but no. Be like you. Oh, I know it. Um, want to see you, Lord. See you. See you. See you high and lifted up. Uh, according to CCLI, what's the most popular worship song right now? Oh, jeez. I should know this, but I don't. It's got to be something from Hillsong. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to go with Firm Foundation. That's a good one. Great song. Not the right answer. Is it Reckless Love? No. I must have been at some point, though. Had to have been. Had to have been. Is it Oceans? Come on. Number one Christian song on the top ten right now. Fear of God. So close. Goodness of God. Oh, so close, but no. Uh, who is the most often sung artist of all time? Ooh. My favorite, Michael W. Smith. So close, but no. I have no idea. How about, how about uh, Michael Smith? Oh, Michael W. Smith. Yes. Great. Gr that's a great. But it's not. It's not. Elvis Presley. Also very good. But not. But not. Oh my goodness. I don't know. I don't know. I can't, I can't think. Who is old and who know, we know their songs? <laughs> um, Would it be Michael Jackson? Roy Orbison. Johnny Cash. Justin Bieber. That's a great guess, but no. Surprisingly, Chris Tomlin. Oh. Of all time. That kind all of time. All time. All time, Chris Tomlin. I guess. Think about all the songs that sing, get sung by his every Sunday morning across church. Yeah, corporately, I guess. People are singing Chris Tomlin a lot more than Justin Bieber. I think that's a good thing, kids. Probably. Great job, everyone. Great job, Dave. Uh, my name is Scott. If I haven't met you, and I have a couple clarifying points for Josh. Uh, uh, the pancakes did cost money, and now Josh is paying for them. So uh, I'm so excited. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. Everybody's going well. <laughs> and uh, uh, just, you know, also for our mission vision values this week, uh, today, uh, there's child care available as well. So if you're here and you want to bring uh, your kid under, is it kind of preschool and under, I think, uh, the littles, uh, please know that you're available. Uh, child care is available. We'd love to have you at 4 o'clock as well well. And uh, man, uh, we love that there's multiple opportunities for you to get involved in our faith community in different ways. And whether that is middle school or high school, uh, whether it's volunteering or Trinity Kids, uh, or even participating in what we do here online at home, if you're working out, whatever you're doing, watching today, or you're in here and in person, and you've made it a point to get involved in what God is doing. And we really believe God is doing something every single day of our lives. And it's our job to kind of listen in and to discover who he is and what he's all about. And in doing so, amazingly, and I don't know if you're early on your journey, been through a journey for a long time with God, but you discover something about yourself. You discover how he's created you and purposed you and designed you. you. You discover his goodness and his hope. And more and more every day when we're in the community of people, uh, we, we get to get a picture of God that perhaps we wouldn't have discovered by ourselves. And that's the beauty of why we gather, the beauty of why we serve and interact and do what this thing's called church, even though church is the people, not the building. And part of that church story has been uh, opportunities to gather on weekends. And we've been doing that uh, since the church began way back in the day, uh, from the beginning of the church launch in Acts chapter 2. Uh, till today, uh, week after week, people gather and celebrate God and honor Him. And, and we, we learn together and discover. And over the course of the summer, we're in a series called One Another. And last week, we kind of put a, a bow on top of that 
uh, little series. And uh, we also had this weekend kind of a little hidden on the side. And this weekend, uh, we kind of put a little asterisk beside it because even though we finished the One Another series, there was a One Another that kind of was resonating with us and we thought we'd like to unpack today. And if I just pick my phone up off the ground, I can tell you what that One Another was. It was, uh, (laughs) thank you, (laughs) it fell, people. (laughs) It's Colossians 3, it says this, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. I love that picture of, hey, how we encourage one another is songs. In that normal song where we just sing a song of joy or love to one another about God, there's also the, the spiritual songs. That's actually the pneuma, the wind of the Spirit. It's, it's the, the Spirit's moving and following along as the Spirit maybe evokes a new song. And hymns really has that picture of you sing a song to one who deserves it. That's really what a hymn is, and a divine God. And for many of us, we we step into worship like it's something that's natural, but for others, it can be difficult or perhaps confusing or a little uncertain of what that means. And so today, we thought we'd love to talk about what worship's all about, what it means to worship, how we can worship no matter where we find ourselves on the musical scale or not. No matter if we enjoy raising our hands or sitting down. And so we've invited uh, Jason, Elise, and Andrew, some of our worship leaders, to come join us. Would you give them a hand and welcome them here today? It'd be so great. Uh, Jason's a volunteer, and Elise and Andrew are on staff with us. And so I'd love to kind of uh, step out into this and right off the top. And Andrew, maybe we'll start with you of like, uh, what, what is worship and why do we worship? <laughs> Just right to it. Hey? I know, right? We're hitting it. Uh, you know, this is going to sound, maybe it's going to sound 101, uh, but I think we need to start here. Worship is about God, period. It's for God, period. It's not for me. It's not, it's not because of anything that I've done or anything that I've accomplished. It's because of what he's done and because of who he is. It's about God. It's not about pointing the finger back at me. Ultimately, I, you know, we believe that, that worship is our response to who God is and, uh, and what he's done. And I also believe that it's, it's our response to the identity that he has placed within us through Jesus. I, I read this quote this summer, and I'm going to read it here. Um, it's from a book called How to Worship a King. Uh, Zach Neese, if you're looking for a great read on worship, uh, How to Worship a King. Uh, he says this, religion teaches us to view ourselves as tools. If we perform well, we are pleasing and useful to God. If we perform poorly, we're of no use and can be put aside and thrown away. That God would choose another tool that works better for him. That's religion. The religious heart, it says, I must do my duty in order to be of value to God. Worship is the opposite of religion. The heart of worship says, Jesus proved I am of value to God. I serve him because he is also of value to me. So religion teaches us that our function determines our worth and our identity. I am because I do. Worship teaches us that our identity determines our worth and our function. I do because I am. And it's God that determines our worship. So if this is, if this is true, then our musical worship, and let's talk about that, our musical worship is not about checking a box at the end of the week or once a week. It's, it's all about a heart posture that we have every moment of every day. Uh, it's a powerful example, Andrew, and, and a reminder of, of the, the priority of uh, realignment. And I often find times, and in, in, uh, I think uh, Josh mentioned off the top, or you did, about just the fact of our week being so busy, especially a school starting, and whether it's university or taking littles or whatever it is, or jobs kind of summers over and you're getting back into it. And our minds can get involved in so many things, and it's actually fixing our eyes off, uh, leaving something and fixing our eyes on Jesus. And so the thing that's capturing our attention needs to be postured differently. And is that the way you see it as well, Elise? Yeah, it is. You're on the nose there. <laughs> it's a good thing. Um, yeah, ultimately, like, and for primarily, like our worship is worship is a response. Um, it's to who God is in His character and what He has done through His Son. Um, my my brain goes to the pictures that are throughout the Book of Revelation that are just beautiful, and um, the ones that are the saints and angels surrounding the throne of God, and they're worshiping the Lamb simply for who the Lamb is. Mm. Um, 
because of what he's done, because of who he is. And they're just circling the throne, singing those words, holy, holy, worthy, worthy are you. Um, and that's, that's our, our role is just to respond to what God has done for us. Um, and when we do that, worship is transformative. Um, we're, we're not really supposed to enter and leave as the same person, you know. Um, I kind of think of it as like, you know, when you spend a lot of time with one person, uh, maybe it's a roommate or whatever, but you you start to pick up like things that they say and like little things that they do and maybe some characteristics of them. Um, that's kind of how I see these moments of worship. It's It's you know, focusing on Jesus, learning more about him, and in turn, when we invite the Spirit to do a work in us in that moment, he is changing and molding our heart to become like the character of Jesus. Um, And as we individually do that, you know, worship is meant to be unifying. It's meant to be edifying to the whole community. Um, It's meant to be encouraging when we come together and we sing our songs over one another, and, you know, the church has that responsibility of being the light of the world, so we all need to be rallied about around one thing, and that's Christ. Um, My brain goes to uh, in Exodus, in the book of Exodus, uh, you see the people of Israel are uh, crossing the Red Sea, and they're being chased by the Egyptians, and then they're delivered at the end. Mm. And I, I, I was reading it, and I was like, Oh, this is interesting. The first thing that they do, it's not not a head count, at least what's written in scripture. What it's not a head count, it's not, ooh, maybe getting a little bit more distance from the Egyptians. It's let's sing a song of how God has delivered us and let's mm. give thanks to God for what he's done. And that wasn't just a one-time song that they sang, it was something that they repeated for generations and generations and generations um, as, as the Israelites because they wanted to continue to remind each other like how God has provided for them, how God will continue to provide for them. And that's what we get to do together in our corporate worship. We repeat these songs, we sing over each other to remind one another um, of what God is actively doing in our midst. Boy, I love that picture, Elise, because I know for me sometimes, and maybe for you, you'll come into a, a worship gathering or a church service, and then you might get into a song that repeats a little bit, and you fight it, you know, like God's faithful, and you're like, I haven't seen him be so faithful this week, and then you keep singing that over again, that God is faithful, and it does something inside of me. When, when I repeat some attribute or characteristic of God or, or a piece of truth that, that I haven't found to be true or forgotten, perhaps, to be true, and my mind and my body shifts into that in different ways. And I know, Jason, you're uh, a worshiper at heart and a musician at heart, but, but you also come at it not only from that perspective, but from a neurological perspective. You understand what actually worship does to us internally as well. well I understand a little bit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. But it's actually really interesting, Elise. Like, you're giving a neuroscience lecture right here, not even probably knowing it. Uh, totally so thank you for that. That, that yeah. was well done. Um, but yeah, a little bit of the backstory on that. Like, um, you don't have to know a lot. God has created every single one of us as brilliant. And we're all wired to be like genetically and even in our cellular level, we're all wired for love. Right down to every organ that you have in your body, everything that you own, 3D, like everything that's physical, is wired with love. In fact, the entire universe is wired in love and because of that there are systems and things that god has laid down for us to be able to experience that so that's why every thought we have so just to clarify so the brain in your body and it's talking to your entire uh, body through your nervous system so it's telling your heart what to do your lungs what to do your brain is governed by your mind so your mind is your body is in the 3d realm but your mind is in a 4d realm so it's it's not you can't hold your mind you can hold your brain but you can't hold your mind am i going too fast no it's great i get a little excited okay so your brain as your mind as you use and exercise your free will which is in your soul so you have a mind a will and emotions that's what makes up your soul that's what's communicating to your spirit and your spirit is communicating to your mind what to do your mind's telling your body what to do so where do we want to spend most of our time working on? It should be on our mind. And worship is really actually an ongoing conversation with the Holy Spirit. It's every single day, and it's where you give your attention to. So worship is adoration. It's devotion. It's where the seed of your emotions, where it goes to. And every time you do that, you are whether it's positive or it's toxic, you're laying down physical pathways in your brain. 
So for those of you who study neuroscience, you know that there are things called dendrites in your brain. They're literal physical pathways that grow. Uh, it's protein called tubulin and lays down. And what it oh, does... Oh, yeah, tubulin. You remember that, yeah, right? Yeah, I remember that. From... So tubulin lays down. It's kind of like if you think about it like a snow or a fresh snow and you make tracks in the yeah. snow. The more often you go through those tracks, the more protein lays down. It turns on genetic sequencing, all that kind of stuff. And what your brain is doing is it's remembering what it did in the past. So it's kind of like the first time you hear a song... You you kind of go, okay, that's good. I've heard notes before, but I haven't heard this song before. And you don't necessarily love it the first time unless hmm. you're some, something's familiar to you. But as you hear something over and over again, your brain begins to go, oh, I remember that. Like even now as I'm speaking, you're kind of going in your brain, you're going into your files, and you're going, okay, is what he's saying real? Is it true? Is it my experience? Is it his experience? What is it? Your brain's evaluating everything. And it's all to do with those pathways that you've laid down, like highways that have driven through. That's why when someone who has, say, lost the ability to remember short-term memory, if they have a history, like if they grow up in the church or in some sort of community environment where singing was a big part of that, they can recall that instantaneously because it's hardwired into your brain. So the point is worship is a part of that high hard wiring designed by God. Hmm. It's ever expanding, it's ever going. You're always laying down, like even right now, you're laying down tubulin in your brain, dendrites are growing, and if you revisit them often enough, they will become solidified and available to you later on in life or tomorrow when you know everything kind of goes sideways. You can tap into that because God has created you to be able to tap into it effortlessly. Hmm. Is that Do right? some of us lay tubulin faster than others? Like, I don't know. No, you don't know. Okay, that's it. Oh, you can clap you for do. that. You sure, do. by all means. That's great. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I think it's a wonderful perspective, Jay, and that's perhaps why songs resonate with us from like when we're younger. Like, or maybe we sang right. hymns when we're younger, and there's just something already that's familiar with it. Or right, because we all our brain is always searching for where we're safe and where we're loved. Hmm. And if we've got a positive memory around that as a child, like if we went to sing hymns, like I grew up in a small Mennonite church, and we sang hymns all the time. So for them, they're safe for me. It's, it feels loving. It's, it's, it's warm. But if it's brand new to somebody, it's, it can be something that is foreign. And okay, now I got to, I got to grow new pathways. Hmm. That's a great perspective. And I think it's probably why, you know, all the tribute bands are going around again, you know, or the bands that were popular in the eighties and nineties and people are going to concerts because there's something familiar about that concert. That's why they're getting popular. Oh, I, I know that I can believe it, but, but there's a difference when it comes to just listening to, uh, you know, a song that isn't postured towards Jesus. That isn't, that isn't aligned to the divine, you know, rather it's, it's aligned to a good feeling or a good experience. Like I know for me, uh, I'm a big, a big Jimmy Buffett fan and he had this song called breathe in, breathe out, move on. And, and there was something like in some days after home, after I go for, home from work, I'd listen to that song and it just helped me. But you know, it didn't transform me. It was when I listened to the song like firm foundation where, where I'm like, okay, there's a faithful, faithful God that's speaking to me. And that transformed my heart. That reminded me, and I didn't go back to Jimmy Buffett. I went back to Firm Foundation, you know, and I went back to something that was a truth that I can understand about the divine. And I love Psalm 116. It says this. It says, I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my prayer for mercy. And catch this, because he bends down to listen, I will pray as I long as I, as I have breath. Like, as we come here personally or corporately, our God is bending down to listen to our praises as good or as beautiful as, as, as we think they are. Or if we think we have the worst voice in the world, God says, I want to hear it. I want to express it. So I'm going to bend down to listen to experience what you have. And, and, and I guess that kind of leads to the next question of what kind of what's your personal experience with worship and how has that kind of transformed you? And maybe you want to kick that off, Elise. Yeah. Um... Lately, Jesus has been teaching me a lot through worship lately, but um, what he's been teaching me lately is just how close he is to us. And I love that verse, Scott. He, he bends down to us. He initiates that. He wants to be close to us because of how much he loves us. Um, specifically, uh, there was a moment I went to a worship conference about a year ago, um, and it just kind of brought in my you know, knowledge of what happens during worship and um, what what our role is in that. And I, I went to this large group session where they were, uh, one of my favorite worship artists was having a conversation pretty similar to this one. Um, and she unpacked this idea um, and this metaphor of worship being 
our ability to enter into the thin place. And I know that's kind of a weird, weird phrase, but um, the thin place, she described it as being this opportunity to pull back the curtain a little bit and realize that there is no space. There's no space between us um, and God. And, uh, you know, I mean, when you think of when Jesus gave up his spirit on the mm. cross, immediately, like, the, the curtain in the temple was split in two, and there was now no separation between the everyday person and the holy of holies. And so that's what this thin place is that we get to now experience um, as we enter into worship because of the spirit. And so I had this, I had this idea now in my head as I went into um, the evening worship session um, at this conference and something just, there was just this profound, beautiful and weighty realization that we are in the presence of the God of the universe. And I know that sounds normal to say around here, but when you really think about it, um, it's profound to know that God's proximity, both physically and spiritually, he's here, he's in us, he's around us, he works through us. Um, and just being in a room full of worship leaders that were declaring the same thing and had just kind of recognized the same thing, um, it, it felt as if we were stepping into that throne room that night. Um, I, I did not walk away as the same person or as the same worshiper. So um, that's, that's influenced me today. I, every time I walk into a worship space or I know I'm going to lead a worship space or be in the seats, um, I just have that picture in my head of what does it mean to enter into the throne room right now? Am, is my heart stepping into that? Am I willing to go into that thin place tonight um, to encounter God? And that's the joy we have as worship leaders is to hopefully pull back that curtain for somebody else to maybe get a better glimpse of Jesus than they had before. Um, and that goes past just the walls of these spaces in our worship spaces here on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night. It's, it's looking for those thin spaces and those holy moments in your everyday life um, outside these walls as well. So, yeah, Jesus is close, and he's just reminding me about how close he is these about days. How close he is, how he pursues us. That's a great perspective of Lisa. And I know woven throughout Scripture, and if you're familiar with some of the stories, you think of the Battle of Jericho, the worshipers went before. You think of, of David. He not only was a musical worship, he was a poet, and he worshiped God through all sorts of forms, and he, and he danced before the Lord. It says he even danced naked. That's how much he was worshiping God. He had so much freedom in there. And you, then you think of Revelation, the book of Revelation that says eternity's written on our hearts. And in that, the picture of us being worshipers, not a God who's demanding, but a God who is worthy of our worship, a God who woven throughout that, this, that response to him. And so there's a natural outcropping of how we engage with, with worship. How, how's that look for you, Andrew? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, musical worship for me, my entire life uh, has been that thing that has con constantly just pointed me to Jesus. Right? I remember as a kid sitting, uh, listening to different CDs of... Salty. Yeah, salty. Well, <laughs> I like try. I'm going old school. And, uh, old school. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, and then just these, these, little, these little moments that are within these songs, these little truths that are just piercing the heart. And so music has always been that thing. You know, I've just, I carry these songs with me. Um, a very practical example and something that's, uh, that's much more, more recent, I would say, uh, is that this past summer that was very real as well, that there were uh, these songs that kept pointing me to Jesus. Um, some of you may or may not have noticed Elephant in the Room. I wasn't around much uh, this summer. Uh, being transparent, I, I knew that my tanks were low, um, and also I was working through some significant hurt that uh, was caused unexpectedly and um, from friendly fire. And uh, it was a journey through the summer, and I needed to take some space. And so in you know, the, the momentum of just how my life has played out with music, I started this playlist at the beginning of the summer. And uh, whenever I would come across a song or someone would send me a song I, that, I, that resonated with where my soul was, I'd just add it to that playlist. And then I would have this playlist playing over and over and over, I, you know, driving in the car, in the background at home, working out, whatever it was, that this playlist would just be, be rolling. And, and looking back on that playlist now, uh, it's, it's pretty funny because the songs at the beginning of the summer, uh, they certainly were not the, um, yay God, <laughs> uh, life is good, God is great uh, type songs, but they still pointed me to Jesus. Um, one of those songs that I, I, that I deeply resonated with and will still do, uh, it's a Brandon Lake song called Don't You Give Up On Me. And it's, it's lyrics from the perspective of God. And I... 
it's saying, don't you give up on me, because the darker the night is, the, the brighter the light hits. And that wasn't a, there's hope right now and everything's right type moment for me. Uh, but it was a, there's, there's hope. There is hope. It's there. I'm in the darkness right now, but there is hope. Um, and then I continued to find these songs through the summer, and uh, probably most recently, Scott, you fired a song over to me. I mentioned it one day, a Christian Stanfield song. I, oh man, what's it called? It's make written it down here alive. somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't. Uh, make it through alive. Make it out alive. Make it out alive. And um, you know that was another song that just kept my my eyes fixed on Jesus. It pointed me to Jesus. It. it talks about step into the furnace, let the fire serve its purpose. It's painful in the flame, but it's what it takes to change. And that kept my eyes on Jesus, you know? I, so to come back to your question, Scott, how has musical worship uh, influenced my, my journey, my relationship with Christ? It's that constant reminder of who he is, what his promises are, and my responsibility as a Romans 12:1 worshiper Offering my body as a living sacrifice, mm. holy and pleasing to God. That's, that's my spiritual act of worship today. And yeah, that's what music has been for me. Uh, I appreciate the picture of that, Andrew, how worship. <laughs> how worship uh, enters in no matter the circumstance of our life. And, and it's not always yippy skippy. It's, it's often in the dark places in the difficult times, in the valleys that just seem a little bit difficult to figure out how I'm going to get to the other side. And sometimes we're there a long time, but how God uh, meets us in the valleys and at the mountaintop, and he meets us in the joy and in the sorrow. And how when our God bends down to listen, he's looking at us wanting to be present with us in that circumstance. How's that look like for you, Jay? Yeah, I would say I've had a kind of a, a different path. Like it's, it's, I've, I'm, I often feel very conflicted. Even just answering the question is tough. Um, for that reason, because um, I, there is such a value in, in worshiping, and there's so much, it, it, there's this tension of, are those words true? Are they true in, you know, in my life? And then I see the discrepancy between the two. And I went through a long season where the discrepancy felt more, like the chasm felt wider. And um, I had kind of, I had leaned into music as a kid. It was just, it was something that I, it just, especially, so I lost my hearing as a kid. Not like I was really, really low hearing. And um, my one ear got better. The other one basically just stayed deaf. And so for me, like even in my posture, I had to really, I remember always sitting with the headphones on as a kid. So I had to really work to listen to music and I really enjoyed it. Um, but so naturally moving into worship leader in my early 20s was just something that was, it felt fam uh, familiar and new, um, but I wasn't ready to be able to actually lead worship effectively. And so I remember a, a very clear time in my um, early learning where there was a guy sitting, um, and by the way, almost every worship leader has this story, <laughs> I've learned. <laughs> There's a gentleman that was sitting right in the front, and uh, he would always sit in the front, and he would sit there, and as soon as the worship, he'd be all attentive to everybody else, and as soon as the worship would start, he'd close Closes his, his arms off, and he would like just sit like this, and he would <laughs> close his eyes. And I'd be like angry at him. <laughs> I'd be so I'm like you're trying to lead, and you're like, what's up with you? Like at least pay attention, you know. And it would just week after week after week. So you can imagine what kind of pathways I was laying down, and I was just so toxic in my thinking, and it got to the point where one day, and this is just like how the movie plays out, right? Like he approaches me after a service one day and just says, hey, like, I just want you to know like when worship starts here, he goes, I just, sometimes I just get so overwhelmed with God's presence and his love for me, I can't help but just kind of go quiet mm -hmm. and silent. And like, <laughs> of course, it's like, oh man, I totally thought you were just like <laughs> driving right. into the service. But like, it just, it obviously showed me and I didn't really learn my lesson because I kept learn, like, doing the same thing. I would get upset with people and because we can see, you know, what's going on in the, in the room. Um, <laughs> It, we True were very sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Um, <laughs> but that's not the point. The point is that we're all together, and it should be the point. But for that reason, God actually took me out. And so for 14 years, I didn't lead. I never st touched the stage. Nothing because my ego had gotten so bad, and anger was just like, how do you worship when you're an angry worship leader? It doesn't work. And um, so I was just. I learned how to be in the congregation, and I never, ever in a million years thought I was going to come back. 
Um, but then God's plan, and mm. he, I'm so grateful, I'm so thankful, and it is such a journey still. It is such a way of trying to explore, because there's corporate worship and there's personal, and for the last number of years, it's been mostly personal, and now stepping in, it is scary. Um, we, none of us want to be performers. None of us want to get up here and do that, and it's a struggle. It's a struggle sometimes because you know people are watching and it's hard to just cast it off and go into a different place, back into the thin space where Jesus really designed us to be and to just operate from that love zone and not be afraid of what people are going to say or the feedback or the comments or even the praise. Just all of it going like you said, Andrew, it's all for God. Yes, we benefit. Yes, there's things that happen to us internally while we're worshiping. And yes, we get, you know, parts of our brain, our body are lit up and we get healed, but our bodies and our, and our act of sacrifice is really ultimately just for Jesus. I love those perspectives. And, you know, often, um, if I were to be candid, you know, I think unworthiness plays a role when you communicate in a church, whether you're, you're um, uh, preaching or leading or whatever, because you come with your baggage from the week and your baggage from the email you had or the text you had or the experience you have relationally. And you come here and you're like, I have no right to be standing here saying anything. I have no right to be leading here. And often it's like you're just preaching or singing into a mirror because God's, God's the, and God's the mirror. You're looking to his face and he's, he's speaking to you and he's encouraging you. You're going, okay, God, it's not about me. This is about you. Okay, God, this is about your spirit. This isn't about, it's, it's me just offering a sacrifice. So I offer it today in that light and I trust you to do something with it, even though I feel like it's the worst thing I could possibly do. And, and more often than not, he shows up as he does by his spirit and speaks and moves and does that. And so I, I just really appreciate your perspectives on that. And I know for me, uh, I, one of my most profound worship experiences when I was getting my degree in Saskatchewan there, I, uh, we went to this nunnery that was in southern Saskatchewan, and we were there for a silence retreat. Now, you know me, and we can equate silence retreats are not my first joy when I was 20 years old. Not even a hot chance I wanted to do that. And I remember fighting it all the way, but we got there, and we had to be silent from the time we got there after a few instructions until we left and I don't think I've had a more worshipful presence the room was as you would imagine a nunnery to be like be like a bed a table a lamp and a bible that was it and we just spent time just talking to God and one of the most powerful worshipful experiences was our dinner time where we made dinner which was soup and buns homemade buns with the nuns and we didn't say a word and then we were just asked to look each other in the eye as we ate supper together it was one of the most powerful experiences. I get shivers, actually, as I think about it, because I met God. I met the divine in the middle of that, in the simplicity without words. And that's the beauty of worship. It can take so many forms. And I know for some of us, we're thinking, okay, listen, I, I, the last time I played an instrument was my recorder in grade six, and I failed that, right? Like, you're like, I have no hot clue what to do. Don't get me behind a trumpet. If somebody hears me sing, they will be walking out. And so I think for some of us, we're like, yeah, great. I'm, I, I, like, I'm down. I'm actually an awesome guitar player. I just don't do it. Or I, I love worshiping. And other people are like, man, I do not want to touch it with a 10-foot pole. And uh, so, you know, how does that look like for us if we don't feel like worship is the thing for us or musical worship? Well, there's good news. Hey. Because music is not worship and worship is not music. Because music can be many things and worship can be things other than just music. So, like, for me, like, I love skiing. Like, I moved to the Okanagan because I want to be near Big White. And I truly get a sense of awe. Like, it's kind of like worship is the thing that makes me go... Like this, like just kind of like takes my breath away, right? And uh, if you hear a great song or you hear someone, like someone does, does spoken word or something, sometimes it's just like, it just silences me. And skiing does that for me when I'm going real fast. Mm. So I, I, like, I can picture the times it's like, and we clock everybody hard. else is getting away in terror. But you're like, <laughs> yeah. yes, God. I've totally and lost yeah, control. Yeah. <laughs> They're all going, oh, too, at the same time. No, like I can feel. That, like people that do like the runner's high, that like the, the when you're when you're physically moving and there's many different ways to experience worship. And I mean, it does lift my adoration to God because it's an ongoing conversation with the Holy Spirit. And you can have that whether you're doing sport or you're doing musical worship or you're doing whatever. There's tons and tons of ways to express adoration to God. And I love the concept of sitting in a nunnery and just being silent. Like I actually did a personal retreat a week and a half ago and just sat for four days in silence. And that like you may you may run from that. I love that. <laughs> yeah. As an introvert, that's like my that's my safe space. I love being just quiet. I just stare at the lake, and God showed up, and mm. there was no music. There was nothing else there but a sense of oh, like that. 
Mm. How, how would you invite those that, uh, Andrew, that um, are, are kind of looking and they're like, hey, this isn't necessarily the thing for me? I think it's, uh, it's important to say that um, some of the most passionate, wholehearted, expressive worshipers that I've ever met, uh, and it's some of you, uh, couldn't find a <laughs> note if your life depended on it. <laughs> and that's okay, because the, the sound that's being made when we join corporately together, and that thin space that we're entering into, it, it's, it's beautiful in, in the context of a corporate gathering. Um, you know, I, I don't know about you, like I, I just feel like there's, there's something about uh, not letting our feelings lead our, our decisions, right? And uh, Romans 12, it talks about an act of worship. It's a conscious decision as well to worship. And uh, when, when I'm personally in a, a corporate gathering like this, and we're entering into a space of musical worship... I, for one, I can't help but just be drawn. It's, there's something attractive to uh, the, the sound that is being made by God's people, bringing praise to himself. And, and I, need to, the, I, I need to be a part of that, you know, because I, I believe that when, when we're making that sound, that's, that's the thin space. That's heaven meeting earth. Um, Psalm 20 talks about uh, God inhabiting the praises of his people. Right, and and so if we're making this sound and God's at work, then then we're uh, then what's happening is a space is being created for the Spirit to move powerfully in our midst. I think there's a reason why in Second Chronicles 20, the musicians, the worshipers, are thrown onto the front line of the army as they walk out into battle. And it's not because they're you know the easy target or acting as a human <laughs> shield for those who are holding weapons. It's because they're stepping out onto the battlefield, singing their praise. And what happens in that moment? As soon as the, God's praise is being declared on the front line of this battle, the Lord sweeps in and eliminates the enemy. And so I think there's something to be said, something to be learned about that battlefield strategy for every single one of us. Mm. That battlefield strategy of stepping out with praise first. Let's, mm. let's be a people that lead with praise first into our battles. Mm. And let's see what God does. Uh, and that can be uh, somebody else doing it on my behalf. You know, I can put a, a worship tune on. I can play the Trinity uh, worship album. I can do, I see what I did there? Thank plug. you. There you I can do all sorts of things. But I can do that. And I can enter in even if that isn't my primary place of comfort. How about for you, Elise? Yeah, and I, I mean, I think of why, part of the reason of why we come on Sunday mornings is to sing together and to worship and to enter in. Um, so musically, I think, you know, we, there, there's no two of us in this room who are the same. Um, therefore, there is no one way to enter in and to express our worship. For, for many of us in this room, um, we, we sing. Like, the thing we can't help but do is <coughs> express it through belting it out with our voice. Maybe we close our eyes and we focus. Um, maybe it means lifting your hands. Maybe it means getting in the aisles and dancing, which is beautiful. Um, and that's, that's how you need to express yourself because you can't, you can't hold it back because God's just been too good to you. Um, and then there's some of us where, like, like you described, like that's just, that's just not how we enter in in those moments. Sometimes we just need to sit and let those words wash over us. I know for myself when um, sometimes if you come into a worship setting and you're just, life is just hard. <laughs> sometimes it's hard to sing those words and you need your community to encourage you by singing them over you. Um, and you just need to sit and listen. Um, and then on the flip side, like you said, Jay, like there's nowhere in scripture where it says worship equals music. That's not a thing. <laughs> um, Romans 12, to kind of hit on where you were, Andrew, is like it says, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. That is your true and proper act of worship. Not music. <laughs> Living your whole life as a living sacrifice. So I guess I would just encourage people who maybe don't resonate with the music side of things necessarily to ask themselves the question like what does it mean to live a worshipful life what does it mean in my life with what i have what resources i have what gifts i have the things i can offer to encourage one another and to maybe pull that curtain back for somebody to see jesus what are those things in my daily life in these walls and outside the walls um, that i can use to live worshipfully for the kingdom uh, thanks for that picture, and I love that because I, I, I think God just anticipates that, and when he does, we can anticipate him showing up, and, and I think he shows up sometimes in the simple and in the profound. Okay, we're going to wrap this up, maybe just like a one-sentence, 
what are you believing for when it comes to Trinity in our faith community around worship? Jay? Um, just, yeah, there you go. That means. <laughs> I'm just gathering my thoughts. Um, my one sentence would be, I want us to link up and follow Jesus together. Hmm. That's great. Um, my heart is that each one of us, whatever it looks like for us, will find that powerful uh, encounter with God and that direct line in our worship. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that it's, uh, it's an increased hunger um, for God that we would enter into <laughs> our battles with praise first. Where God's glorified, the spirit moves and lives are changed. Ah, thanks. Can we give these guys a hand? Thank you for this. Well, we are going to spend a little time today uh, singing on the backside here and just reminding ourselves, would you stand? Um, you know, as, as you think about these next few moments, I really want to encourage you. You know, you'll hear us uh, at, after our gatherings often pose two questions for you. What is God saying and what are you going to do about it? So I, I might recalibrate that today. What is God saying and what are you going to sing about it? You know? Uh, we're we're going to sing some songs that, that were picked because of the lyrical content. Uh, our team does that every single weekend. We just don't pick the five top songs we think are going to make everybody feel happy and good. Rather, we think through what are we talking about and where are we going and what my, God might be saying to our hearts. I hope some of you and a lot of you were able to, I know a lot of you were able to join us this past Wednesday where we had our worship night. And it was a powerful experience where the formality of a weekend is gone, but the, the intention of honoring God and meeting him is front and center. And we had a powerful time of prayer and worship and, and expressing new songs and old songs of who God was and, and raising hands and sitting down and there was tears and there were smiles. There was a meeting of God because he chose to bend down and listen, and he was glorified. And that's what he wants to do right now. You know, as always during our gatherings here, we have a response stations. You see them by the crosses back there. Uh, even if you want to go and respond and write something on the cross, maybe it's something God inspires you to. Maybe it's, it's just something that's beginning the way of you and him, and you just want to nail it to the cross. Say, hey, God, I, I don't want that in there. Maybe it's a request. Hey, God, I'm having a hard time worshiping because this thing is on my heart. I just need to give it to you. We've got prayer team members who will be there that can just pray for you. You don't even need to say anything. You just need to look at them and say, can you pray for me? They'll pray for you. You just have an opportunity. There's even communion elements there. If you want to take communion on your own, whatever you want to do in that form. Or maybe you just want to call out to God and worship as we sing. But as we do that, could I encourage you to have this in your brain? I will extol you, my God and King, and praise your name forever and ever. I, I will praise you every day. Yes. I will praise you forever. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. Let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. I will meditate on your majestic, glorious splendor and, and your wonderful miracles, God. Your, your awe-inspiring deeds will be on every tongue. I will proclaim your greatness. Everyone will share the story of your wonderful goodness, they will sing with joy about your righteousness. All right, you ready to sing? Praise the Father, praise the Son, yeah. praise the Spirit. Forever to the King of Kings. Pray. 
the space that he actually loves us and he's with us. Into this room where people pray. 
such a joy to sing with you today in this moment, such a privilege to gather with you. I don't know your story today, but what I do know, because you spent time with us here, because you joined us online, because you made a move toward God, you need to remember this today. He heard you. (laughs) He bent his ear towards you. He listened to you in your silence, in your words, in your songs, in your expressions. And most of all, this same God, he loves you today. He designed you. He's, he's pouring his love out on you. So as you leave this space, as you, as you go into the next part of your day, leave knowing there's a God who leans towards you, who desires to know you, and wants to give you his love, his all-consuming, his passionate, his gracious love. And so as you go, now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you this week and give you his very precious peace. Thanks for coming. We'll see you next week. Trinity Church Online, what a gift to be with you today. I'm excited to see what God is going to do in your midst. How are you going to tell the story? How are you responding to what God is doing? Whether it's through song or prayer, silence, solitude, what, what is God going to stir up in you this week? Make sure you visit our website and there is a share your story tab. Share with us what God is doing and let's connect together as a community. We're so thankful for the way that we're being good stewards of that, holding it well and holding it open open-handed. We can't wait to continue this journey. Don't miss next week. We will be here for kickoff Sunday, and we will see you again soon. Have a great week.